Well, okay, here we are, endocrine 15. We will discuss ovaries, or you could say ovary if we're talking about one. You should know our dogs, horses, and cats, and most mammals have two ovaries. Hopefully they are both active. Sometimes one gives up the ghost and becomes non-functional. Sometimes might somebody might call them static. Uh, but that's not our main focus now. We're talking about endocrinology. Well, let's just refresh here a little bit. Ovaries are the gonads in the female. So the female gonad is the ovary or ovaries and gonads make gametes. So gonads in the female are the ovaries. Gametes are the eggs. Now when I say make, maybe I should say release because when a little female kitten is born, she has all the eggs in her ovaries that she'll ever have in her whole life. Same with dogs and horses and most mammals. There's a set number uh, at birth and they're never made anymore, okay? For the female, that doesn't go for the male. Okay, so the gametes are the eggs. That's a plural, right? Ova is plural, ova, O-V-A, sorry. If you wanna say one, then you would say the ovum, or you could say egg, E-G-G, -G, right? Sometimes when they're early, in early, early development, they're called oocytes. Just trying to give you a heads up on all the stuff that, <laughs> all the terms that can be used. Well, okay, so you gotta remember the gonads always have two claims to fame. One we've already mentioned, making the gametes, right? And then the other claim to fame is that they produce hormones. So ovaries produce hormones, testes produce hormones, we're doing ovaries, so let's talk about the hormones. Well, just in case you don't know where the ovaries are located, I want to give you a little bit of anatomy before we do the hormones. So here's a nice little drawing somebody made. It's at that website there. And of course, we have caudal here, cranial. You might say, why do I call it cranial? There's no head. It's just, this is a cranial direction. You don't have to have the head showing at all. And then you remember this is dorsal and this is ventral. Now, make sure you understand that because when our pets are spayed, you know, that's the term S-P-A-Y-E-D, I guess. But if, and then if a dog, a female dog undergoes a spay, then the ovaries and uterus are taken out. And it's usually done in, I've got this written down here coming up, a mid-ventral laparotomy. So the animal is laying on its back on the surgery table and an incision is made here and they go down and use a little instrument, usually with a loop to draw up the uterus and everything else will come along and I've got a few pictures of that. Okay, so there's kidney there. We're in the lumbar region. I just want to make sure that's definitely lumbar vertebra right there. Kidney which are retroperitoneal. We talked about that in our renal endocrinology section. There's a left ovary, and then on their side, there's a right ovary, because I know this side that's closest to me is left, because this is forward, right, cranial. Well, then, there's a body of the uterus, and that's usually close to where they incise, well, they actually cut it at the cervix when they do a spade job. So, like, from here forward is taken out. Okay, so the vagina is left because you don't want to disturb any chance of how the bladder with its urethra ending up in the ventral aspect of the vagina. You don't want to mess with any of that. Okay, so that's what you'd call the in situ location. So maybe I haven't used that term, so let's do it. In situ. That's referring to how it looks like in the animal. So we're doing an in situ location of the uterus and ovaries. Okay, let me get that up here a little bit. I'm not sure if I need the space. Let's do this right there. 
Okay, so now I guess I might need space. Let me get that out of here and show you this beautiful picture that somebody took when they were doing a spay. I believe this was a dog. Now we're in a mid-ventral laparotomy. So this is the belly side of the dog. This is cranial. This is caudal. How do I know? Because here's uterine horn. And you should know dogs and cats are litter bearing. So their uterus is going to be elongated. And look at this is a great picture because you can kind of see it's not very big. When you have puppies in there, wow, it grows a lot. But look at the great blood supply even now. There's an ovary hiding back here, but a great blood supply. So you want to tie off blood vessels because if you pull it out and not tie anything off, the animal can have a chance of hemorrhaging. So I'm going to put that over there. And this is a mid-ventral laparotomy. There we go, right there. So now let's compare what the ovaries look like for dogs, cats, and horses. Well, of those three animals, the horse has the largest ovary. Like in this image here, you can see the human hand, and, you know, it's pretty good size. That's a normal horse ovary. They will vary in size a little bit depending on if it's the breeding season or the non-breeding season. Uh, something we will talk about someplace else. Okay, let me just get some more space here. Now this is a cut view of the horse ovary. So here's intact, on cut. Here it's been cut like an orange. And we can see the interior of it. The interior structure, at least it, with our naked eye, of the horse ovary. Uh, if you ever see a blister, there's two blister-like structures there. Those are follicles. The fluid is gone because we cut it. This area here is very interesting. This area is called the ovulation fossa. We don't have that in dogs and cats. So the ovulation fossa, whenever you see fossa, F-O-S-S-A, that means a depression, like a low point. So in horses, the ovulation point is here, and the horse egg oocyte or ovum would leave here. Now you should know horses are single bearing animals. There's only one fetus developing, usually. That means one egg was released. In fact, 99.999% of all horse people don't want more than one fetus developing in the horse uterus. Okay, now this is either a dog or cat, and the reason I'm hedging is because it doesn't really matter, because dog and cat, they're litter-bearing animals. I'm going to move this over here. This is some picture I found, and they've labeled it. Now, the one thing you should notice is look at on the right. Look at how poorly colored that is. That's a preserved specimen. It's been, who knows, it's been in liquid formalin or some other solution for a long time, and everything gets kind of dull color versus like these two on the left. That's fresh tissue, never been preserved, okay? If you leave it out, of course, it would rot. So that's the value of having something preserved. You can dissect some, put it in the refrigerator, come back, everything's hunky-dory. Fresh tissue, you either have to fix it in a fixative, so it is preserved for a long time, or use it fresh, it makes great pictures and dissection, and then you throw the tissue away. Here's an ovary. Now the animal's laying in its dorsal recumbency, and there's a kidney, so I know here's cranial, here's caudal, because the two horns of the uterus go into uh, join here. So this is definitely caudal, this is cranial. One kidney showing, and it, the animal has been injected to show blue is the veins. Anyway, look at this. This is really great. <laughs> they mislabeled something. Man, this is this is good. 
these are not fallopian tubes. I think this was a picture labeled by some students at some college someplace. But what's really interesting is they thought these were the fallopian tubes. Wow. Now that's neat because no, that's the uterus. Wow. This is good. <laughs> uh, learning on the fly. Okay. So here's the ovary. And you might say, okay, where are the fallopian tubes, also called the oviducts? They're coiled up here around the ovary. Ah, very good. I wonder if their instructor ever caught that. This is the uterine horn. This is the uterine horn. Down here where they join, you can call it the uterine body. Wow. I didn't notice that till just now. Now I'm going to do this one, and I'll get away from there. I just wanted to show you, uh, this is a cat, because the reason I'm hesitating is sometimes I can't remember what all these pictures are. Here's the cat. So this is the ventral aspect of a cat. It has undergone mid-ventral laparotomy. And here's an ovary. And it doesn't, too bad they put a, didn't put a quarter or a dime there. It's probably the size of a coffee bean, maybe a big coffee bean. Here's the other ovary, and they've got like the ovarian follicle labeled. It's always a little blister, and of course cats are litter bearing, so there'd be 12 follicles ready to go. This doesn't show that at the moment. The uterine horns uh, have been cut off, but they just kind of left some there. But it's just kind of a good, good way to show you dog ovary, cat ovary, and horse ovary. Now we're going to do a little ovarian histology. We're getting close to what hormones are made, but you should understand the structure a little bit about where these hormones go. Okay, here's one coming down. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. And the first thing I have to say is I don't know what language this is depicted here. Uh, you know, I guess Japanese, Chinese. That doesn't really matter because all ovaries are the same the world around. So, wow. Anyway, this is a nice section of an ovary, and here is where it was attached to the body. You should know that all the blood vessels and lymph vessels and so forth only come into the ovary in one part. The rest is really free because this is either a dog or cat, and it really doesn't matter because um, all these eggs, see, this is an egg right here in a follicle. If one follicle, one egg. Okay? There's another follicle. Different sizes. This one here is good. This one might be the next one to ovulate. Who knows? So, that's an ovary. Excellent. So, let me get that out of the way and bring in another one because this one has some things that I want to talk about. And this is really a good picture, and I will enlarge it a little bit because it is a lot higher power than the previous image I showed you. There's always follicular fluid in a big follicle. So you might say, wow, that looks grainy. Well, actually, before it's processed, it's very smooth. It's kind of a little thick, but it's you can aspirate it up with a needle and a syringe and Here's the primary oocyte, that's the egg, one follicle, one egg. And let's see, I have that written here, I'll put it right up there. One follicle, one egg, okay? You never have more than one egg in one follicle, never, ever. But let's talk about some of this stuff. I want to point out the theca layer. That's really on the outside of the follicle, like here's the follicular wall. And the theca layer is on the outside of the follicular wall. And this is important because there's another, some more images. Inside the follicular wall is another group of tissue cells called granulosa cells. Okay, I'm going to bring that right up here, granulosa cells. So this is really important because the theca cells make a hormone. The granulosa cells, I'm going to tell you two hormones that are made by those cells. And, of course, in an introductory presentation, we don't talk about all the things we could have, could have in every 
slide. Okay, before I get to the um, endocrine material on the ovary, I have to tell you to we need to continue with uh, endocrine 15b. The file got way too big, and um, so go there.